In this video, we're going to learn about the layout options uh, which you can find by default on Framer. So if you click uh, on uh, the top left uh, layout panel, you're going to see a few different options. The first one we already explored, uh, that is the frame, uh, but right beneath it, we have a few different uh, options which are rows, columns, and grids. Let's uh, talk about uh, rows. So we're going to select it and uh, we're going to simply drag and drop uh, a row element uh, right here. Now, as you can see under the layers panel, you're going to see that uh, essentially what a row is, is a stack and inside of it, uh, it's going to be two individual frames. Now, you don't necessarily need to create a row or, or a column directly from here. You can actually simply create a stack uh, and uh, you can always change uh, the direction so this is uh, going to make uh, for example the row a column if uh, i put it horizontally and uh, if it's vertically it's going to be a row so these are all the uh, flexible elements which you can reutilize uh, at any moment now if uh, we go ahead uh, and uh, for example add uh, a text element uh, I can uh, easily see how this is going to work. So I'm simply going to make the text uh, bigger and uh, I can easily simply drag and drop uh, the element uh, within the frame. So again, these uh, stacks uh, are going to contain these two frames uh, and inside of the frames, uh, you're going to add the elements in order to create uh, the layouts uh, or the components uh, for your website. So. If I go back and uh, I make this uh, a column, I can select the frame and then if I add a layout, just as we've seen before, you can see how I can then basically utilize all of the layout options which are associated with a stack. So you can easily create a stack which is nested inside of another stack inside. In fact, it's one of the things which we're going to use all of the times and that uh, it uh, utilizes the principles of CSS Flexbox. Now, one more thing to keep in mind is that uh, if you go and uh, I'll simply undo this, uh, I want to basically touch upon some of the most uh, common elements uh, which are the same as we've seen before. So for example, if I need to adjust the gap, uh, I can easily do that uh, from here, right from here, and uh, you can easily change uh, the padding. Now, all of the alignment distribution options are going to be exactly the same as what we discussed previously. So you're already familiar with uh, those side of the matter. Now we're going to discuss uh, the grids uh, and we're going to have some practical applications which uh, are going to be advanced uh, and uh, talking about grids uh, in more detail. But I want to give you a bird's eye perspective uh, as a heads up on that. So as you can see, the moment that I create a grid, I am going to have uh, a grid group uh, which is going to contain uh, four different frames uh, in uh, this case. Uh, and you can adjust the grid directly from here. I also want to remind you that you can easily transform a stack into a grid. So these transformations are flexible also for the grids as well. And uh, you can easily adjust the number of columns directly from here. You can also adjust the number of rows. So if you have more rows, I can simply add more frames uh, and uh, you can see how all of this is quite flexible together with uh, the gap uh, between uh, these elements uh, and also the padding. Now you're going to notice uh, that there is uh, this uh, advanced uh, option which uh, is going to give you some more minute details uh, regarding the layout. So for example, first one is going to be auto and uh, the second one is going to be fixed. So auto is essentially going to create uh, columns automatically based on the number of columns that we have here. While fixed is going to give us uh, fixed uh, elements which we can set. Uh, so it's uh, a more customizable approach uh, to grids. Now, right afterwards, uh, we're going to have uh, the width, which uh, essentially if uh, you change it, uh, you're not going to see much and this is uh, because it's uh, the minimum width 
but if uh, we set uh, a fixed width uh, you can see how this is going to basically set uh, the width uh, in a fixed way based on the values that we add uh, over here now if uh, you want to also adjust the height in a, a different way you can use the fixed height which uh, in this case it's going to be fixed at 200 pixels and uh, I can also set it to simply fill the container so based uh, on the height of the container it's going to adjust automatically and uh, I can also say fit content so if you're going to have uh, content such as uh, text uh, or images uh, it's essentially going to make calculations based uh, on that automatically and you can also set the alignment uh, to be center left uh, or right aligned so this is pretty much it uh, as an overview we're going to explore and uh, reiterate uh, a lot of these concepts uh, along the way so don't worry if uh, some of this uh, might seem confusing at this very moment because it's going to become second nature in no time.